but you got to lay down your pride. You got to clean up yourself from within so that you can function in the world without feeling that way. The, nobody is responsible for the way you feel. No one. Now, parents set us up to be subject to the world, but the world is not responsible about the way you feel. Uh huh. That makes sense? Yep. People, I mean, you guys sometimes see how they treat me on TV, right? Right. And, and how they talk about me on the radio and all that. But it's funny, it's like a movie to me. And then the devil come by and say, oh, everybody's listening and stuff. But it's still funny because I know who I am. I know my flaws and I know all that stuff and I'm not moved by it. I'm not, my ego is not attached to my flaws anymore. I don't identify with that. You got to get over that. The world, they are not responsible for that. The Mexicans are not responsible for you, James. <laughs> that makes sense. I'm going to read, because of that, I have something that fit right in. Anybody disagree with that? Oh. I don't disagree with it, no, but, you know, I'll kind of tie it into what you were saying, the, 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 what we were supposed to be doing this week. And yes. So you know, I had a little bit of success with it the first week for one day. And what we were saying is not judging anything. Not judging things are good or, good or evil. Basically. Because that's what's making you feel disrespected. You're judging that situation, that person, in that very moment. You're saying that they're wrong. You're making the decision about right and wrong, but it's coming back on you. Right. So I've had a nice little run now of not being able to succeed at it for a number of days. <laughs> <laughs> and um, where everything is just a judgment of you know, good and bad, everything, wrong, positive, negative, good feeling, bad feeling, and everything is, it seems like it's just relentless. Yes. And it's weird because I can hear you say what you say too. You're talking about things that are true. I can understand it as being true, but there's still some kind of a disconnect between that and the real world of reacting to things. You know, like you're saying, you know, being disrespected. Yes. Yeah, it sounds crazy. But I kind of knew that going in, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, so there's still a little bit of a disconnect between the, the truth of what you're saying. It's like, it's almost like so obvious it's a given. But yet there's still something there that judges everything. And what that is, you haven't recognized yet that you, you don't really know who you are. You're unconscious to the real Patrick. And you identify with your situations. You're closer uh, to identifying with your situations in life rather than who you really are. And so that's why that little is, is still not registering 100% for you. You don't really know who you are yet. That's true because I, I do tend to take some type of identity from whatever yeah. it is. People who are feeling disrespect are taking their identity from that. Yeah. That's why they're hurt because their, their identity is being hurt as well. We were talking about, I think a little bit, maybe Thursday night, about wins and losses or perceived wins and losses. Yes. And I definitely still feel very close to that in terms of everything seems to be a win or a loss. Yes. And I'm very connected to the game all the time. And I, my, my worth go, goes up or down based on if I perceive I'm doing well or not doing well. That's right. I thought Kent had a good one when he said, he felt disrespected sometimes when people say, what kind of lawyer are you? And, and the reason is because he has to realize that he is not, he, he is not a lawyer. That's just a job that he does. It's not who he is. And when he laid that body down, the lawyer is not going with him. They're going to, say, <laughs> they're going to hang in the office. <laughs> and so he is not a lawyer. Like when people call me Reverend Peterson sometimes, I feel embarrassed by that because that's not who I am. So I'm like, just call me Jesse. I'm not, and just tell you what kind of work I do. And so when people say, you're not a preacher, I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know, they're saying, that, <laughs> they're saying it to be me, but I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'm just Jesse, but Reverend just tell you quickly what kind of work I do. But that's not who I am. You know, being black is not who I am. You know what I'm saying? 
I finally can see who I am, and who I am is totally different from this environment that I have around me. But everybody who's not whatever, say they're who they are could be anything. With me, it's, a, it's performance. Somebody could be their skin color. Yeah. Somebody's money. It could be their job title. Yeah. Right. Most 99.9999.9% of people have identified with their outer environment. Yeah with their situations, whatever it may be, and that's who they become, and that's what, when you deal with that, they're violated by that. Right, right. Because it means the world to them, even though it doesn't work, it does give you a false sense of identity. Right. But it's shaky ground because someone can come along and shake, shake you out of it, offend you, but the real you cannot be offended. So Did you know that the real you cannot be offended? There's nothing in the physical world that can offend the real you. Right, I believe that. But it's gathered to us as a sense of security to start with. Yeah, like ownership. It's, it feels like we need it, so we take it on. It's like a warm blanket. Until it becomes too much of a problem. And yeah, shed it. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. This is why God said you got to lay down a life in order to receive life. Because as long as you're holding on to these ego-filling things, which is of the devil, you're never going to be free in life. You got to let all that stuff go. You got to seek first the kingdom of God in his right way so that you can drop one life and then discover who you are and start living from within. You know, I'm real funny now at times. You notice that? I can tell funny jokes. You, you heard me. I made Patrick. And, <laughs> see how everybody laughing now? These jokes are coming from inside of me. It's weird. My talent is coming from within, the jokes. Everything I do now is coming from within. Uh, the way I learn things, everything. It's amazing that everything we are is already inside of us, but our parents and the teachers have dumbed that down by putting pressure on us, by trying to force us to be the way that they are messed up like them, to learn in a certain way, to act in a certain way. Uh, even a lot of parents, I notice now, and mothers seem to have it worse than fathers. They're like praising their children all the time now. Oh, you're so wonderful. Come on, you're so smart. Just do what you do. I love it. You know, constantly praising. And they don't realize they're setting their children up to live off praise. And the kids go, you eventually hate them for that. Because the kids are going to have conflict with who they really are. You know? And so they, they bring us into this world and they make us worldly. And it disconnects us from that natural way of learning and natural way of being. And for me to tell you this, it's got to be real because I don't have sense enough to know this on my own. <laughs> I really don't. I have, I'm surprised that I know this. But it's in all of us. When I look back on the last 20 years of my life, 21 years since waking up, I didn't know all this was inside of me. You can't feel it. You can't taste it. You can't touch it. But it's there. And that's why God said, seek the kingdom inside first. The kingdom of heaven is inside of us. It's not on the outside at all. The kingdom of hell is on the outside. And so you got to, and it's right here. I'm not making it up. You got to clean up the cup on the inside before you can clean up the cup on the outside. Isn't that something? Yeah, yeah Pat. Well, the whole thing is you're talking about like the... Um you know, a stubbornness that I've had over the years. But I, I don't even really, in, in light of what you're saying here, it's not really even me. I mean, whatever stubborn is not me. No, it's a sin that's There's made like a home. Kind of thing that is stubborn that's there. Yeah. But I always kind of took ownership of that, too. You know, that somehow I was stubborn. Right. Yeah. Judging. Yeah, yeah, another judgment. Yeah. So it's kind of nice not to see it that way because it's, I don't know. You're not to have to own it or whatever. You could be free right now if you stop judging anything. Don't judge. You cannot judge right or wrong because you don't know what's right and wrong of yourself. But we've been trained under pressure to be that way. <laughs>